In this video, we're going to look at how you draw the Lewis diagrams for polyatomic ions. So a polyatomic ion is an ion that has more than one type of atom in it. So the process is very similar to how you draw Lewis diagrams for molecules that have more than four areas of electron density around them. And I'll link that video in the description below if you want to recap that first. The first example we will look at is the carbonate ion. So this has one carbon and three oxygen atoms and an overall charge of two minus. So the first step, just like with uh, for molecules, is to write the atoms involved. So one carbon and three oxygens. And then under that, write the number of valence electrons each atom has. And then count up the total. So in this case, we have 22 valence electrons. After this, we have an extra step. So here we need to account for the electrons that have either been gained or lost in the process of becoming an ion. So because we have a two minus charge on the carbonate ion, that means that two extra electrons have been gained. And so we need to add this to the total. So 22 plus two means that we have 24 electrons in the polyatomic ion. Now we need to work out which atom we should place in the center of our Lewis diagram. So this is the atom that needs to gain the most valence electrons to be stable. So in this case, carbon is in group 14, so it has four valence electrons and needs another four. Whereas oxygen is in group 16, so it has six valence electrons and only needs another two valence electrons to be stable. Because carbon needs to gain the most electrons to be stable, we place this in the center of our Lewis diagram, and then we spread the remaining oxygen atoms evenly around the central carbon atom. We then have our second extra step that isn't present when we draw the Lewis diagrams for molecules, and that is to place the entire structure in square brackets. It's important that those brackets are square. We then write the ions charge at the top right corner outside of the brackets. So in this case, carbonate has a charge of two minus. So we place two minus in the top right corner just outside of those brackets. Now we draw a single line between the central atom and each of the surrounding atoms. And this represents a single bond or two electrons. Now we need to work out how many of our 24 electrons have been used. So each single line represents a single bond or two electrons. As we have three single bonds so far, we have used a total of six electrons. So we take this number away from the total we calculated at the start, which was 24, and we know we still need to add 18 electrons to our structure. Start by adding the valence electrons to the surrounding atoms so that they each have a total of eight electrons. So because each oxygen already has two electrons in that single bond we've drawn, we need to add another six valence electrons to each oxygen. And we always add them as pairs. Now we can recalculate how many electrons we've added to our structure and how many more we still need to add, if any. So we need to count up the number of electrons we've added to our surrounding atoms. Three times six is 18. And then we need to take this number away from the total number of electrons that we calculated in step four. So in step four, we went 24 minus the six we'd added so far, which left us with 18. So when we take the 18 we've added away from the 18 we needed to add, we get zero. So we don't need to add any more electrons to the structure. Finally, we need to check if our Lewis diagram is correct by making sure that each atom 
has a full outer shell of at least eight electrons and that all valence electrons are paired. So when we look at oxygen, each of the three oxygens have eight electrons around them, so they're stable. But when we look at carbon, we see that it only has three bonding pairs of electrons, or six in total. So it's not stable. Therefore, we need to turn one of our single bonds into a double bond. So to do this, we choose one of the three oxygen atoms. It doesn't matter which one because they're all the same. And we donate one of the lone pairs to turn it into a bonded pair of electrons. So in this case, we've taken two electrons from the oxygen on the bottom right, and we've used both electrons to make another bond between oxygen and carbon. This is called dative bonding because oxygen has provided both of the electrons in that bond. And so now there is a double bond between the carbon and that oxygen. So there's still eight electrons around that oxygen. And now when we count up the number of electrons around carbon, it has four bonding electron bonding pairs of electrons around it or eight in total and so the carbon is stable as well and so this is our correct Lewis diagram for the carbonate ion. For our second example we're going to look at a cation or positive ion iodine tetrafluoride. To begin we write the symbols for the atoms involved in the polyatomic ion so one I and four Fs, and under that we write the number of valence electrons each atom has. In this case, all of them have seven valence electrons. When we add up the total number of valence electrons, we get 35. Because we're drawing the Lewis diagram for the polyatomic iron, we have an extra step. In this case, we have a positive iron which means that we need to take away an electron from the total charge. So IF4 has a charge of one plus, so we need to take away one electron from our total. So 35 minus one is 34. So in this case, we need to add 34 electrons to our Lewis diagram. Both iodine and fluoride are found in group 17 on the periodic table. That means that they both have seven valence electrons and need only one more to be stable. Therefore, when deciding which atom needs to go in the center of our Lewis diagram, we need to look at which is the least electronegative. So because iodine is found further down the periodic table, it has more shells, and therefore the protons have less of a pull on the bonded pairs of electrons, so it is the least electronegative. This means we place iodine in the center of our Lewis diagram, and then we spread the remaining four fluorine atoms evenly around that central atom. As we are drawing the Lewis diagram for a polyatomic iron, we have that extra step where we need to put the entire structure in square brackets. In this case, the charge on our polyatomic ion is one plus. So we put that plus in the top right corner outside of the brackets. We then draw a single line between iodine and each of the surrounding fluorine atoms. Each of those four single bonds represents two electrons. So we have used eight electrons up so far. We then take this number away from the total number of electrons we calculated in step one plus that extra step, which was 34. And so 34 minus eight is 26. Next, we need to add the valence electrons to the surrounding fluorine atoms. They each have two electrons so far, so we need to add another six to each fluorine, and we always add them as lone pairs of electrons. 
Next we add up the total number of electrons that we've just added. So in this case 6 times 4 is 24 and we take that away from the total number of electrons that we still needed to add in step 4. So 26 minus 24 is 2. This means that we still have two more electrons that we need to add to our Lewis diagram. And we add any remaining electrons to our central atom. So in this case we are adding one lone pair of electrons to our iodine. Finally we need to check that our Lewis diagram is correct by making sure that each atom has a full outer shell of at least eight and that all valence electrons are paired. So in this case each of the four fluorines has three lone pairs of electrons and a bonded pair and they have eight in total so they are stable. The iodine has four bonded pairs of electrons and one lone pair. It has 10 in total and each of the valence electrons is found as are found in pairs. So this is the correct Lewis diagram.